Welcome and thank you for joining us for Beyond the Data. I'm Dr. Phoebe Thorpe. We had a very interesting public health grand rounds today about public health and infertility. With me today is Dr. Lee Warner to discuss uh, infertility and public health. Thank you, Dr. Warner, for joining us. Thank you for having me. Um, we heard today that public health and infertility, infertility is a public health issue. Can you tell me a little bit more about why that is? Sure. Uh, the one thing I think we do need to acknowledge that it's a personally devastating issue for couples who are affected. It results in depression, anxiety, and it affects their quality of life. Um, from a public health standpoint, I think there are things that public health can do to reduce exposures that lead to infertility. There's topics that we, we can uh, deal with as far as prevention mm -hmm. and in the area of detection with improved surveillance. And I imagine it would be that the diagnosis of this would be quite devastating. What kind of support is that there out there for couples that are facing this? Well, there are a couple organizations uh, that are very, very good at helping individuals who are coping with infertility. Mm -hmm. uh, one is Resolve the National Infertility Association. Another one is the American Fertility Association. I um, understand, too, that infertility doesn't affect just women. Uh, can you tell me a little bit more about that? Absolutely, and I'm glad you asked. Uh, infertility is a disease of, of a couple, both women and men. As a matter of fact, men are responsible for almost as much uh, infertility as women. And I think providers need to acknowledge this. Tell me, what can healthcare providers do for their patients who might be facing infertility? The first is to help patients to stop smoking and get their uh, weight under control, particularly if they're planning to become pregnant. So this is what we call preconception care. Mm -hmm. And this goes uh, applies to both men and women. For physicians that are seeing patients being treated with uh, chemotherapy to be aware that this can affect their fertility and they should look into uh, methods to preserve this fertility. This particularly is uh, applicable to younger patients, including adolescents. Oh yes, of course, a good mm -hmm. point. Um, and we heard some about the health, uh, the National Public Health Action Plan for the detection, prevention, and management of infertility. What else would you like to tell us about that? Well, there are a few things. One, that this is a historic moment for CDC to actually have a coordinated public health effort that addresses infertility, not just in one part of the agency, but ac across the agency. And I think one piece of this plan that is uh, key is that it was e uh, the process that we had working with partners within CDC, working with other parts of the federal government, non-governmental agencies, uh, healthcare professionals, and the organizations I mentioned earlier that help people cope with infertility to get everybody on the same page onto what is essential about the action plan and what can be done. From a public health standpoint, I think one thing that is key is we are uh, in the business of collecting data related to infertility and by working with these partners, we can enhance the data uh, collection methods that we are having to enrich what we have on, regarding infertility. Thank you very much for joining us today. It was lovely hearing from you. And thank you very much for joining us for Beyond the Data. See you next month.